May I present my son, Roger, and his fiancée, Alicia, daughter of the Earl of Parkhurst. This is the Charbonneau woman? Quite. And this? I suppose it, uh, half-brother, what, what? I do think there's a resemblance. None, none at all. But, Roger, my sweet, use your eyes. Mine are perfectly clear, Alicia, dearest. Yours, however, have been dulled by your excessive fondness for claret. You babble. No, no resemblance, except perhaps one. We smell about the same, but then I've been out for a frisky ride. What? That did not prod me. The French clock. Roger, you will not. Take yourself and this brawling boor from this house. As to which of us is the brawling boor, there is little doubt, my lady. Come, Mama. Under the law, I could have you maimed for attacking me. Well, then your laws are as worthless as you are. You French bastard. I don't need the law. I'll see to your punishment myself, thoroughly and well. I shouldn't venture to be too bold, Roger. He appears a match for your own hot temper, and striking him would be like striking yourself. He does have your good looks, after all. Perhaps he's a shade more handsome. I can't quite decide. Can you, Lady Jane? Show them out. That will not be necessary, my lady. We are happy to leave. We do, however, intend to stay in the village until Philip stands at the bedside of James Amberley and is recognized as his son. My lady. My lady, an unexpected guest, Lord North. Stand aside, if you please. Stand aside. Why should I? Why, sir? Because these good people believe some deference is due the Prime Minister of England. You ignorant sod, this is Lord North. And for this I should stand aside. Yes, sir. That is essentially the reason. Well, I do not give a damn who you are. A trace of a French accent? Hmm. Have we here a disciple of the infamous Rousseau? Well, I have read him, yes. And the pernicious Locke, too, no doubt. Every word. Then, as do they hold you, that the countryman has the same rights as the king, that the power of the former matches that of the latter? Well, the truth, sir, is that the power of the people is the greatest power on earth. Ah. But the king rules by divine right. Well, then let him rule in heaven. Lady Amberley, you have indeed attracted a perfect member of the mob illity, as we call that rabble, over in our rebellious province of Massachusetts Bay. Though I do not make the habit of discoursing with commoners, I would advise you of one fact. Englishmen enjoy the fullest liberties of any race under the sun, but liberty is not a license to question the natural order of society. I know not how you caught this wicked disease of false libertarianism. But purge yourself before you come to disaster. Now, will you step aside? Will you? I've never spied you on Quarry Hill before. Oh? Have you looked? You have a saucy tongue, sir. 
May I ask if there is any news of my father? The situation's little changed. The Duke seldom wakens. They do fear for his life. Thank you. We have very little knowledge of what goes on at Catland. Unlike Lady Jane, who knows exactly what you do every minute. Like this one? No, not this one. Will you marry my brother? Your brother? <laughs> He'd like that. Well, whether either of us likes it or not, it is fact. I have no doubt. Yes, I shall marry Roger next year. The Amberley lands added to those of my father will leave an inheritance of increased size to children. To children? With a man who humiliates you? Larger concerns make things bearable. Roger's fortune. Exactly. Is everyone who lives doomed to be a prisoner of something? Or someone? If life be a prison, then we have no choice but to furnish it. Brightly. You realize, of course, that after Roger and I are married, I shall have to find lovers. Of course. One husband is not enough. Marriage has little relationship with more diverting pastimes. And I have often thought it best that Roger will be a crude lover, unlike the French, who we are told are experts in the art of love. And were you also thinking of indulging yourself in the novelty of finding out? You speak our language very well. I had a very good teacher. And in Cupid's disciplines, have you had teachers too? Enough. And you? Oh, yes. Many. Lady Parkhurst, it seems this conversation has wandered a very long way down an unfamiliar path. Shall we turn back, Master Frenchman? Can we? I don't think so. There's no highwayman. Drive out! Stop the coach! Philippe, I had to see you. Why, Alicia? To cleanse your conscience. One of the servants saw us together. He forced me to tell him there was nothing I could do. Oh, forgive me. I'm so glad I caught you. But you were right to leave. Dr. Bleeker says he can't save Roger's hand. If he ever sees you again, he'll kill you. Then come with me, Alicia. I can't. That was decided long before Quarry Hill. I want you, Alicia. I do not care about the money or can't lend. But I want you. And I want you. I always will. But you will not come with me. To where? Oblivion? Goodbye, Alicia. Where can someone like you go? Drive on! <laughs> 